Let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. The Signal Oil Program. I am the whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. The marketers of Signal's famous Go Farther gasoline and motor oil invite you to hear another strange tale by The Whistler. Tonight, the story of a wild night on foggy seal rocks and the girl who was married to murder. But first, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about Clyde Davis, a signal gasoline dealer in Alameda, California, who's been working on cars since 1910. War or no war, Davis' motto is service, the kind that keeps cars running and customers smiling. The 1st and 15th of each month are battery days at Davis Signal Station, and the battery of every customer is given a complete free inspection. Another thing Davis has a crank on is clean car windows. If the chamois alone won't do the job, he uses Bonami. Davis doesn't run a repair shop, but his long experience as a mechanic has helped many a customer avoid a repair job. Such service surprises many folks these days. But signal gasoline dealers have a reason for going out of their way to please. For them, running a service station isn't just a job. It's their permanent business. And they're interested in making it grow by keeping customers satisfied. Fortunately, the same services that keep drivers smiling are the ones that help cars last out the duration. Wouldn't you say that's a mighty good reason for getting acquainted with your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer soon? And now, The Whistler. In the night, the convoys form, ship by ship, slipping into line, moving out past the Golden Gate, past the fog-enshrouded seal rocks in a cold dawn, past rocks where the tourists go, Where the lovers go. You heard a scream? Yes. But the ships are not disturbed. They move on out into the Pacific, leaving far behind the body of a girl lying face down on the rocks, their wash reaching for her hair. Just a girl who fell off a cliff, fell, or was pushed. The finding of a girl's body on rocks creates hardly a stir in the bustle of the city the next day. A brief item in the afternoon papers, a call for the coroner, another entry in the police records. There are only a few people who notice. If we were to look for them, we might find them down on Montgomery Street in a dirty little bar where artists and would-be artists and slummers hang out. Yes, there are a lot of people here who might know something about a body twisted on the rocks. For instance, that blonde giant at the end of the bar, sitting with his head in his hands, or the girl walking up to him now, sliding into the seat beside him. Rick. Rick, I thought I'd better tell you, they're looking for you. Huh? Oh, hello, Cassie. Who's looking for me? You know who. The police. They're asking questions about Maureen. They know you knew her. So what? Why should they ask me questions about her? Women like her have jumped off cliffs before. Don't try to kid me, Rick. Remember, I'm Cassie, Maureen's roommate. I knew her better than even you did. Yeah, I guess you did. Maybe I never really knew her very well. Well enough to break her heart. Maybe well enough to want to get rid of her. What are you talking about? You needn't pretend with me, Rick. Maureen had no secrets with me. She told me everything. And I told the police. I had to, Rick. They kept pumping me. I had to. What did you tell them, Cassie? I told them that you loved her once, that... 
Another woman had taken her place, a society dame gone bohemian. A blonde and beautiful heiress looking for a thrill by flirting with a poor, struggling artist in a turtleneck sweater. That's enough, Cassie. Leave Sally out of this. Ah, she's in it up to the neck. Maureen was too good to take a back seat to any Miss Money I said leave her out of it. Okay. Okay. Only one more thing. I told the police about last night. What do you mean? You and Maureen had a quarrel last night, just a few hours before she died. Yeah? Okay, so we quarreled. That doesn't mean she had to go jump in the ocean, does it? No, it doesn't. I'm pretty sure of that. That's what I told the detective. You throw your accusations of murder around pretty freely, don't you, Cassie? No, not usually, Rick, but I like Maureen. She was more than a fine sculptress. She was a swell person. She was just about the best of this bohemian melting pot down here, and I don't like to think of her being pushed off that cliff. Just remember that I'll do anything I can to help them get to the truth of this. I'll remember, Cassie. Yeah, I guess you will. Okay, Rick. Better get your answers ready, because if I'm not mistaken, that dick who just walked in is looking for you. Yes, Rick. He's looking for you. You know that. You've been expecting it. You've been curious to see what he'll look like, what expression he'll have on his face. In a minute, you'll know, so gulp down that drink... There, that's better. And there he is. You can see his face sliding into the spot in the mirror where Cassie was a minute ago. You Rick Carlson? That's right. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yeah, I know. Okay, go ahead. It's about Maureen. That's right. You knew her pretty well? Of course, you know I did. She was in love with me. I didn't love her anymore. I took her to dinner last night. We quarreled. She left. That's all I know. What about Miss Blair? What's she got to do with this? I don't know. Maybe a lot. Sally had nothing to do with it. She didn't even know Maureen. Leave her out of it. I'm not sure we can. This Maureen, they tell me, was a jealous girl, unpredictable. Well, able to do a lot of things, say a lot of things. Blairs are a fine family, good name. They wouldn't like their daughter mixed up with a... Go ahead, say it. A bohemian crowd of artists? Maybe you didn't want Maureen to go to the Blairs with the story. And it'd be so easy to keep her quiet, just to shove at the right time. Simple in the fog out there. Simple and sure. Listen, you, whoever you are. Okay, okay, take it easy. I was only guessing. But it all fits pretty well, doesn't it? It fits, only I wasn't there. Oh, that's right. You said she left you after the quarrel. Where was that? At a little fish restaurant at the beach. Near the rocks? Not very far. I see. But you didn't go with her to the rocks? No. Then you might have to prove that. I suppose you can. Yes, he can. Go on, Rick. Tell him it's all right. You needn't worry about dragging me into it. Tell him you were with me. Sally. Oh, this is Miss Blair, I presume. That's right. And you see, officer, you're on the wrong track if you're suspecting Rick. He couldn't have pushed Marine off the cliff because he was with me last night, from 10 o'clock on. You see, Rick's painting a portrait of me, and we worked through most of the night. It was after dawn when we stopped. I see. Okay, I guess I was wrong. Thanks for your time. You're a lucky man, Olson. And I guess you know that. Yes, yes, I know. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, aren't you going to invite me to have a drink? I'm simply burning with thirst, and your glass is empty. Good. Let's have two old fashioned. Sally. Should... What, darling? Don't you want another one? Sally. What, Rick? What is it? You look so upset. Oh, of course, how thoughtless of me. Naturally, you're upset about Maureen. Wasn't it dreadful? And then, you were very friendly with her at one time, weren't you? Uh, before you met me, of course. Sally, why did you do it? What, dear? Tell him you were with me last night. Oh, that. Well, after all, you're the man I love, and naturally, I'd hardly want anything to happen to you that would take you away from me. Just because you couldn't prove where you were. Thanks, Sally. It's all right, Rick, darling. Let's just forget it now. It's all over. No, Sally, that's just what I'm afraid of. It's probably not over. They won't give up so easily. Now you'll be dragged into it. I don't want that. It's all right, Rick. I don't mind. It might even be fun. Yes, an investigation right here in our own group. All our secret lives exposed. And nothing can happen to you. You were with me. I mean that much to you. <laughs> After all, you're the man I'm going to marry. Sally, you mean... You mean you really will? Of course. I intended to all along, didn't you know? And after all, a girl can't say yes too quickly, can't she? Oh, Sally! 
No, but darling, think. This marine business may be messy, a scandal in the papers. What about your family? Ah, oh, never mind about them. I'm determined to marry you, Rick, especially now. And nothing, nobody can stop me. Don't worry, darling, about me. I think it's going to be thrilling. Thrilling? Everything's thrilling to you, isn't it? Yes, because I live that way. I couldn't stand it just living like most people without any excitement or danger. What's the good of living if you can't have any fun? No, of course not, darling, of course not. And when this mess is over and forgotten, I'll make you happy. Very happy. Oh, yes, Rick, I'm sure you will. When it's over. When it's over. But it's not over yet, Sally. In spite of your loyal attempt to save Rick, he's not quite safe yet. Some people are so suspicious. Some people aren't yet convinced of his innocence. Yes, there's going to be a trial for murder. The murder of Maureen. The date has been set, and as the district attorney prepares his case, he finds that each way he turns, there's a barrier. One barrier between him and conviction. Sally. Oh, good afternoon, Miss Blair. Sit down. Thank you. I called you in because I just wanted just a few words with you before the trial. All right, I'm here. What is it? Miss Blair, I'm going to be very frank with you. All the evidence in the Morrison girl's case points to the guilt of Richard Olson. The coroner's jury believed him guilty, I believe him guilty. Any jury in the world would convict him on the evidence, except for one thing, your word. Yes, I know he's innocent because he was with me. That's your story. You don't believe me? That's beside the point. It's my job to convict Richard Olson if he's guilty. I'll try to do that. But I said I would be frank. I haven't a chance if you testify that you were with him. The jury will take the word of Miss Sally Blair, the daughter of a powerful and famous family. Yes, of course. But it's for that very reason, Miss Blair, that I ask you to stop and think a moment. Think of what? Of yourself, of your family, of your position. If it should turn out later that Richard Olson was indeed guilty, could you forgive yourself for having aided a murderer? But he's not guilty. He was with me. Perhaps you haven't heard that Richard Olson and I are going to be married. Married? Yes, as soon as this farce is over. So you see, Mr. District Attorney, you're wasting your time. I see. And you think that you, the daughter of one of the best families in San Francisco, will be happy living the rest of your life with a murderer? Crime has to be proved. Rick will be acquitted. Yes, I guess he will. And so, Miss Blair, you will go that far for another thrill. I don't know what you mean. I'm marrying the man I love. He's accused of a crime of which I know he's innocent. I will testify to that effect. Rick was with me. Very well, Miss Blair. And may I wish you a very happy married life? And so, Rick, you're going free, thanks to Sally and her testimony. And when the trial is dismissed and you're free, you'll take her to that dirty little bar that was your rendezvous. And you'll tell her about all the things in your heart. You don't know what it is, Sally, to be free. You know, I used to sit in that cell and think about you and your portrait. Wonder if I'd ever see you again. I wondered if I'd ever finish my picture of you so that everybody could see your beauty. Darling, it'll be a great portrait. Really great. Of course it will, darling. After we're married, you'll have all the time in the world to paint it. Yes. Yes, after we're married next week. Darling... Let's go down and get the license right now. Oh, wait. Rick, just one thing. You do love me, don't you? You know I do. More than you did, Maureen? Much, much more. I just wanted to be sure. Rick. Yes? Rick, why did you do it? What? Why did you kill her? Sally. Oh, don't look so startled. I knew all along. I just wondered why you did it. Let's not talk about it. Let's leave it as dead as Maureen is. Let's be happy and not talk about it ever. Or maybe you'd rather not go through with this now. Of course, darling. I made my choice. You love me, I love you. That's enough. We'll both forget, Maureen. If we can. You are listening to the Signal Oil Program. Let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. And 
So Rick, acquitted of murder, and Sally, who saved his life even though she knew he was guilty, were married. Not a very happy start for a marriage, was it, Rick? It somehow changed things to know that Sally knew. But then it was only Sally. Charming, beautiful Sally, who got a thrill out of life. After all, she wouldn't have saved you. Wouldn't have married you if she hadn't loved you. Would she? Sally, hurry, come see. What, dear? The portrait. I've finished it. It's wonderful. Come and see it. Just a minute. I'm doing my hair. But aren't you excited? Of course, darling. Can't you wait? No. Oh, all right, Rembrandt. Where is it? Don't joke, sweet. This is my masterpiece. Cast not upon it a jaundiced eye. Uh, it's very good, Rick. I think it will sell. Sell by Jupiter. The woman's a commercial money grabber. Sell nothing. It'll be famous. You really think so? I'm glad. It's a great painting, Sally, because you're in every line of it. You and my love for you. That's very sweet of you, Rick. You're so cool. Why? Well, I, I thought you said the portrait was of me. Yes, and so a composite of all the loveliness of the world. Rick, I don't have green eyes. Neither does the... <laughs> so she does. Do you know I didn't realize it? I meant to make them blue. And my nose doesn't turn up like that. I'm not complaining, you understand. If someone Now, else... don't start that again, please. Rick, are you really happy with me? My gosh, what a question. Oh, but you never go out. You just sit here night after night and brood. I like to stay home. Rick, are you in love with a girl with green eyes? Don't be silly. I love only you, and you know it. Besides, you yourself say I haven't left this studio in weeks. A fine clandestine love affair, that is. Let me see the picture again, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't Maureen's nose turn up that way? And if I remember, her eyes were green, just that shade of green. Is your conscience bothering you, Rick? Shut up. We weren't going to talk about it. Why don't you want to talk about her? What are you so afraid of? Does she haunt stop you? Stop being jealous of a corpse, Sally. Can't you stop hating her now that she's dead? I'm not jealous, Rick. And it was never Maureen I hated, never. That has a chilling sound. What are you driving at? Or is that what killing someone does? Does it make you fall in love with them? <laughs> let, let go of me, Rick. Don't hurt me. I'm your wife, remember? You don't have to be afraid of me. You know that, don't you? I'm not sure. You're so afraid. I thought it would be exciting being married to a murderer, that we'd have a deadly secret to share as no one else could, but it's dull. We can't do this, and I can't say that, because you're afraid. You'd like to hate me, but you don't even dare do that. Loving me is all that keeps you together. It's dull, Rick. I imagine that you'll manage to find some amusement. <laughs> I imagine I will. Sooner or later. Well, Sally, is being married to a murderer beginning to bore you? But as Rick says, I imagine you'll find some amusement, even if it's only with Tommy Melvin. I need a drink. Come on, Tommy, buy me one. Oh, where's Rick? Oh, he's at an art dealer's. He'll be along. You know, sometimes I think he loves that painting better than me. <laughs> Let's have zombies, huh? Oh, that's pretty strong. I like strong things, exciting things. <laughs> You're bored, aren't you? A little. You're not very happy with Rick, are you? Not very. Well, it's none of my business, of course, but uh, why did you marry him? <laughs> He's hardly your type. <laughs> Marrying Rick was the biggest thrill I've ever had. You'd do anything for a thrill, wouldn't you? <laughs> I like that. I bore easily, Tommy, and I don't like being bored. I want to feel everything I can, every emotion, every experience I can crowd into my life, good and evil. You're without conscience, Sally. You could do anything and not look back. <laughs> I like that, too. Thanks. But I don't quite see you're marrying Rick in that light. I didn't think you would. You could leave him, you know. I'm going to New York next week, and you could come along, Sally. I'd like to have you. Thanks, Tommy. You're sweet. It might be fun. Give me some time to think it over. I'll let you know. Tomorrow? All right. Uh, here comes Rick. You better leave. Oh, oh, Tommy, here's a nickel. Drop it in the jukebox, will you? Number 17. Sure. You won't forget, Sally. No, no. I'll call you in the morning. Hello, darling. I've been waiting for so you. So I see. But not alone. Rick, you're not jealous of Tommy. No, no, I guess not. <sighs> you have a drink? No. Sally, listen, I've got to talk to you. We've got to come to some understanding. 
I found my painting on the back porch this morning. The fog might have ruined it. That painting is great. It will hang in the Metropolitan. It's more important than my life, Sally. Remember that. I'm sorry. You're so morose lately, dear. What's wrong? I don't like it, Sally. What? I don't see you anymore. You're never home. You're always here or out with that Tommy Melvin. And when we are together, you ask questions like, how does the tide sound at two in the morning? Or you wonder what that murderer in San Mateo feels, and you watch me when we pass Marine's old apartment house. When I hear a police siren in the street, you watch me. You watch me and watch me. I don't like it. How suspicious you are. I'm not kidding, Sally. I've walked around and around the streets, making up my mind, and now I'm determined to say it out. You married me for the thrill of marrying a murderer, and nothing more, isn't that true? Hold your voice down. Rick, I think you're afraid of me. Maybe I am. You needn't worry. I won't tell the police. I'm your wife, remember? That's not what I'm afraid of. What, then? Perhaps you'd like to push me off a cliff, too, but you can't do it. You love me far too much to hurt me. You're right. Lord, how I wish I didn't. I don't mind. Let's go to dinner, darling. Down at the beach. I want you to take me to that fish place down on the cliff near the rocks, huh? Sally, you know I don't want to go there. Why not? Because you took Marine there that last night? Rick, you must get over that silly fear. Besides, I want to go there. We'll have dinner, and, and then I... I want to take a walk along the beach. I love the sound of the surf at night. Don't you, Rick? There's something strange here, Rick. Something very strange. You sense it, too, as you sit opposite her at dinner. Just like you sat opposite Maureen that night. Only there are things you don't notice. Like those pills she slipped into your coffee cup. And when you leave and start walking down the beach, you aren't really aware of where you are. Sally? Sally, slow up. I can't seem to keep up with you. Come on, dear. We're almost there. I feel sort of strained. I don't understand. Sort of sleepy and tired, huh? Come on, Rick. Here. Here, give me your hand. Huh? There. Now, sit right over here. Where, Sally? Where are we? I... This place seems familiar, but I can't... Of course it's familiar, Rick. Huh? Down below there are the rocks. The rocks? Sally, why did you come here? No particular reason. I like the moonlight on the rocks. There's no moonlight. It's foggy. Never mind. I like it here. I... Uh, I don't... What's the matter, dear? Does your conscience bother you? I thought hardened murderers got over that. Are you afraid, Rick? I... Uh, I don't know. I can't seem to think. I'm tired, but... I think I'm afraid. Yes. You'd like to push me off, wouldn't you? To see my body on the rocks down there with the tide reaching for my hair as it did for Maureen's. But it won't work twice, Rick. You know that. And besides, you love me too much. Sally, what are you doing? Let's get away from here. Wait, I want to tell you something. Let go of my elbow. I'll tell you first. I'm going to leave you, Rick. I'm going to New York with Tommy Melvin. What? But you won't care, Rick. Because, you see, I'm not going to fall off this cliff tonight, Rick. But you are. You were right. I married you only for the thrill of being married to a murderer. Sally, what are you saying? But that's a thrill that paled very easily. Murder itself will be a much bigger one. Are you crazy? Do you think I'll let you push me you over You can't the... stop me, Rick. You see, you can't even stand up without weaving. You won't be able to lift a finger to stop me. I put your own sleeping powders in your coffee. It's nothing a doctor will turn up, but it's enough. Sally, you can't get away with Why it. Why not, Rick? They'll say your conscience bothered you, that you returned to the scene of your crime and killed yourself. It will be very neat... You weren't a very good killer. I'll be a much better one. No, no, Sally, in God's name. Go Goodbye, my darling. You'll be with your green-eyed love in the water, and I shall be free of you both. Let go of my it arm. It was fun, but you were afraid. You won't be afraid anymore, Rick. Sally, <laughs> Sally, stop. <laughs> Sally! Oh, goodbye, Rick. <laughs> But that's not all of this strange story. In a moment, the Whistler will be back to tell you what really happened. 
Meantime, I think you'd like to hear how science has finally defeated the great cause of gasoline waste and motor troubles, carbon. Motor experts say carbon causes noise, overheating, loss of power, and often the destruction of expensive motor parts. After years of research, engineers have found a formula that actually dissolves carbon. And that priceless formula is incorporated into every quart of Signal's famous four-star motor oil. As a result, Signal's four-star motor oil helps motor performance in not just one, but two important ways. First, its rich paraffin base protects moving parts with a tough, lasting film of lubricant that resists heat and wear. And second, Signal's four-star oil actually dissolves out carbon to help your motor run better and your gasoline go farther. Since both gasoline mileage and motor performance are doubly important these days, one of the greatest favors you could do your car and your ration coupons is to switch to Signal's finer carbon-removing motor oil that costs no more than ordinary oils. So, if it's been a thousand miles or two months since you changed oil, drive into your neighborhood signal dealers and say, drain and refill with Signal Four Star Motor Oil. And now, back to the Whistler. Yes, Sally got her biggest thrill at last. She gave Rick sleeping powders and pushed him over the cliff. But then something went wrong. For a girl who had committed murder for a thrill, she suddenly lost her nerve. It was only a little light from a Coast Guard boat, but it sent her running along the cliff, slipping, sliding, taking the wrong turns, and finally... <coughs> yes, over she went. They found her body next morning. Rick told them where to look. Yes, Rick. He didn't die. He was only injured on the rocks. It was Sally who died, by her own hand, you might say. But the police didn't see it that way. They didn't know Sally was the girl Rick loved too much to kill. So they said she was pushed. Twice was enough. So Rick was sent upstate for a permanent change of address. Only just before he left, a strange thing happened. The committee from the Metropolitan Museum of Art came to see his painting. They were a little surprised. It was very beautiful. But there had been an accident. Someone had been a little careless with some paint remover. The girl in the picture had no nose, and you couldn't tell if her eyes had been blue or green. Sally might have known, but then the rocks don't tell their secrets. The tide doesn't testify. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, the Signal Oil Program will bring you another strange tale by The Whistler. The Signal Oil Program is broadcast for your entertainment by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal's famous go-farther gasoline and motor oil, and by your neighborhood Signal Oil dealer, who is at your service daily to keep your car running for the duration. The Signal Oil program was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Robert Libet and music by Wilbur Hatch. It's transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Bill Pennell speaking for your friend, the Signal Oil Company, and suggesting once again that you let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.